Welcome to the Dark History Project. Our goal is to spark curiosity in stories from history that are not talked about as much, but may have more to do with historical events than we might think. We go through many sources trying to find the truth, but as you probably already know, history is written by many people who don't often agree with each other. Our goal is not just to provide you with very interesting, weird, and fascinating stories, but to inspire curiosity. Before we get started, we would love for you to subscribe, like, and comment on whatever platform you are listening to or viewing this on. That way, you'll know when new episodes are available. So, on to today's topic. Our main character is not a person, but a drug. A drug so powerful that it might have influenced the rise of the Third Reich. Now to get started. Let's review the state of Germany after World War I. After World War I, Germany was in a state of political and economic turmoil. The country was heavily burdened with war reparations, and the Treaty of Versailles had imposed severe restrictions on Germany's military and territorial ambitions. The Weimar Republic, Germany's new democratic government, faced significant challenges in the aftermath of the war. Inflation skyrocketed, causing the value of the German currency to plummet, and unemployment levels reached new highs. This period lasted from 1918 to 1933. However, Germany did also experience a period of rapid industrialization and modernization during the 1920s known as the Golden Twenties. This period was characterized by increased prosperity, technological advancement, and cultural innovation. The German government also implemented a number of economic reforms during this time, such as currency stabilization measures and investment in public works projects. The country was also plagued by political instability, as far-left and far-right groups vied for power. The Communist Party and the Nazi Party both gained momentum during this period, with the latter ultimately rising to power in 1933. The cultural and artistic scene in Germany experienced a period of upheaval and experimentation during this time, known as the Weimar Era. Artists, writers, and intellectuals embraced new forms of expression, challenging traditional social norms and values. Overall, the aftermath of World War I left Germany in a fragile and uncertain state. The Great Depression in the 1930s dealt a severe blow to Germany's economy, ultimately leading to the rise of the Nazi Party and the onset of World War II. Now, on to our main character. Believe it or not, there was a drug so popular that almost everyone in Germany consumed it. From everyday people to college students and soldiers, you name it. It was so popular that anyone could get their hands on it just like we could buy over-the-counter medicine today. And what was this drug? Meth. That's right, methamphetamines. The drug came in a pill format called Pervitin. It was a drug developed by the Temmler Pharmaceutical Company based in Berlin around 1938. Now, some background on methamphetamines, also known as crystal meth. It was synthesized in Japan in 1919, but it wasn't until the 1930s that its use began to spread around the world. In Germany, during the 1930s, methamphetamine was marketed under the brand name Pervitin and was widely used. The drug was initially developed as a treatment for narcolepsy, but its stimulating effects soon became apparent. Pervitin was marked as a wonder drug that could help people stay awake, concentrate better, and even improve their mood. It was sold over-the-counter in pharmacies and was available without a prescription. Pervitin was originally tested with college students and then used with soldiers. This drug was seen as a tool that could help win the war. Soldiers were able to stay awake longer, march farther, and do what soldiers do without needing much rest or sleep. Just imagine, you, right now, how much extra work could you do if you didn't get tired or needed to take a break? How much more could you do in your house? Chores, work, study, reading, exercise, hobbies, and everything else we don't do or we put on hold because we're tired. Imagine feeling focused all day long without the need to rest. Now imagine if the whole country did it. Imagine where we would be if every worker could go longer and harder at accomplishing their tasks 
If every college student is doing more research, writing papers, working more on their thesis, and preparing for their professional lives. At the time, Germany was known to have the best education system in the world. Students in college study technical degrees in both business and science fields. Both business and science worked hand in hand, which helped every industry grow. It was a great combination. Old and new companies were developing patents out of Germany left and right. Germany was known as the workshop of the world. If you knew something was built in Germany, it meant it was made with quality. This was no different for the pharmaceutical industry. Germany produced most of the chemical raw materials for medicine in the world. Imagine that Germany was the Silicon Valley of its time, and its pharmaceuticals specifically. Now, how did this impact Nazi Germany? Pervitin was widely used by the general military population, especially soldiers and pilots. The drug was given to German soldiers to help them stay awake and alert during military operations, and pilots would see improvements in their reaction time. It was even used to improve morale and performance. However, like any other drug, the use of Pervitin had some negative effects as well. The negative effects of Pervitin were rapidly apparent. The drug was highly addictive, and many soldiers became dependent on it. Long-term use led to serious health problems such as anxiety, paranoia, and psychosis. In some cases, soldiers who were addicted to Pervitin were unable to function without it, and this had a detrimental effect on their performance in combat. This sounds just like what we see in any movie about drug abuse. First they feel amazing and can do anything. Then the next thing we know, they're going through an overdose or look like they're about to die. Adolf Hitler was a known user of a variety of drugs, including methamphetamine, cocaine, and opioids. It is believed that these drugs helped him maintain his frenzied energy levels during long hours of work and public speaking, as well as alleviate the chronic pain he experienced due to a number of health issues. Hitler's use of drugs is also believed to have influenced his behavior, leading to erratic and irrational decision-making during the later years of World War II. Some historians suggest that Hitler's reliance on drugs contributed to his deteriorating mental state and eventual downfall. There are stories of how Hitler was in such a bad state before giving a speech in front of thousands of people that his personal doctor, Theodore Gilbert Morrill, would come up with a cocktail of drugs via injection, and Hitler would stand up and act like a new man. Another notable Nazi who used Pervitin was Heinrich Himmler, who served as the head of the SS and played a key role in the implementation of Nazi policies towards minority groups. Himmler used Pervitin to maintain his energy levels and focus during long hours of work and was known to have distributed the drug to SS troops on the front lines. According to reports, Himmler was administered Pervitin by his personal physician, Dr. Felix Kirsten, who was also responsible for administering massages and other forms of alternative medicine to Himmler. Kirsten reportedly used his access to Himmler to gain concessions for the Finnish people whom he represented. In addition to his role as the head of the SS and the architect of the Holocaust, he was also a passionate believer in the supernatural and esoteric. He was particularly interested in the mythology surrounding the Aryan race and believed that artifacts and relics from the ancient world could provide evidence for his theories about the mystical origins of the German people. Himmler oversaw a number of expeditions during World War II to search for archaeological relics and artifacts that he believed would support his theories. These expeditions took place in various locations, including Greece, Poland, and the Middle East, and often involved unethical practices like grave robbing and looting. One of the most famous expeditions was the Annen Erbe, which was established in 1935 as a research institute dedicated to exploring the connections between the Aryan race and the ancient world. The Aden Erbe underwent numerous expeditions throughout the war, often accompanied by SS soldiers and scientists. They searched for relics such as the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Spear of Destiny, which they believed would provide mythical power to the Nazi regime. Despite their efforts, however, none of these relics were officially found by the Nazis. Many of the expeditions were unsuccessful, 
and those that did uncover artifacts often found them to be of little historical or scientific value. In some cases, the artifacts were found to be forgeries or outright hoaxes. Despite their lack of success, the expeditions carried out by Himmler and the SS had a lasting impact on the fields of archaeology and anthropology. The unethical practices employed by the Nazis during their searches for relics led to a renewed emphasis on ethical standards and practices in these fields and raised important questions about the relationship between science and politics. Back to our main topic. Himmler's use of drugs likely had a significant impact on his behavior and decision-making. Some historians suggest that his erratic and sometimes paranoid behavior in the latter years of the war may have been due in part to his drug use. Joseph Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda for the Nazi regime, also used Pervitin to maintain his energy levels and keep up with the demands of his job. He was known to have been administered the drug by his personal physician, Dr. Max Otto Koizhwitz. Other high-ranking Nazis who used Pervitin included Hermann Göring, the commander-in-chief of the Luftwaffe, and Martin Bormann, Hitler's private secretary and right-hand man. The use of Pervitin among these prominent Nazis likely contributed to their ability to maintain their high-pressure roles within the Nazi regime, but also had negative consequences for their goals. Now, we can see where this is going. Soldiers who used Pervitin experienced a range of physical and mental health problems, including insomnia, heart problems, anxiety, and paranoia. The drug's side effect could also impair a soldier's ability to make sound decisions and react appropriately in combat situations. Pervitin use also led to dangerous and risky behavior, including aggression and violence towards others. In addition to its impact on individual soldiers, this drug also had a broader impact on Nazi Germany's military and industrial infrastructure. The country's reliance on synthetic drugs contributed to the development of a dangerous drug culture, which persisted long after the end of World War II. Now, we're not saying Germans only advanced in technology, business, and science because of this drug. But if you think about it, it was a broad combination of things that helped fuel the rise of the Third Reich. You had a great education system, business and science working hand in hand, multiple industries and technologies rising out of Germany. And then, on top of all that, you had a drug that might have helped every consumer work and push themselves a bit harder to shape their skills. We can see how Pervitin helped Germany rise, but also fall during these times. The drug was not officially banned in Germany during World War II. After the war, however, the use and distribution of Pervitin came under increased scrutiny, and the drug was eventually banned in Germany in 1986. This was part of a broader effort to address the country's history of drug abuse and addiction, and to curb the development of dangerous drug cultures. Today, methamphetamine use and possession are illegal in Germany, just like in the United States. There are a few books on this topic, and we hope you read more about this subject as we find it fascinating. One of them is Blitzed by Norman Oler, and we definitely recommend you read the whole thing. It is just a fascinating story, and the author Norman does a fantastic job researching the subject. The things he uncovers are insane and super interesting. He really helps you understand the impact of this one drug in World War II. After doing research on this, we do wonder if this drug had a significant impact in both the rise and fall of the Third Reich. What would have happened if this drug was not used by the Germans? What do you think? Thank you for being with us for this episode of the Dark History Project. Hopefully we inspired some of you to look further into these characters and stories. Please help us out by subscribing or liking this episode. If the platform you are listening to allows for comments, please let us know what you think. Feel free to discuss more about this topic or what topics you would like for us to cover in the future. We hope you enjoyed it, and our next episode will come out soon, where we will talk about Genghis Khan and his reign of terror. See you then.